Hi, welcome back to ODE YouTube channel. Today I will do finally the review of this pen. This is a Visconti pen and this is a pen that was in the video of the wish list pens that I would love to get in 2020. And this was one of those and I'm quite happy because I could have it. So, let's see. The, the pen. The pen comes inside this Visconti box, yellowish, with the V engraved all over and then Visconti Firenze, the writing Renaissance, and you take the box and you have the case or the pen box, the actual pen box that has embossed there Visconti Firenze and then the writing Renaissance like you saw there. On the exterior you will see this little flap. Let me put an extra light here. So maybe to help a little. You have a flap here and you push it or you pull it and you have a CD, a mini CD with the information about the brand and also a booklet and this booklet tells us something about some of the models that we have that they have and also there is the proof of purchase and it was bought uh, in Paris in 2014 so this is nice and now let's open the box. This is a fake leather box, so you can see it has deteriorated a little bit with time. But all the original stuff is still here. And here is the pen. Let's close this, take this out of the way. So, this pen is the Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age Oversize. It is the oversize because it quite a big pen. If you look at it like this and if we compare it with a Mont Blanc 149 you can see they are of the same size. Maybe the Mont Blanc is a little bit thicker but not that much so it is a big pen. This pen was... Um, I got this pen in a, through an exchange with a friend from Brazil and we exchanged pens and I got this one so I was quite lucky because I knew the history of the pen and I got also the all the materials and the box and all the original stuff as you saw there so this is one of the most reviewed pens online I will not say anything new about this but I wonder if everyone else has a review of the Visconti Homo Sapiens why can't I have one? So here it is. So let's take a look at the design elements. This pen is quite cylindrical shape on the barrel and it has more of a barrel uh, shape on the, on the cap. The elements that you can see easily are one, two, three, four rings, two on the cap, two on the barrel. The clip has the arch typical of Visconti pens and it has Visconti there with black enamel. Then you have here on the top, you have the Visconti logo there on the top of the pen. This is one of the My Pen System uh, pens that you can take this out with a magnet and replace it with some other things that you may want to buy. There can be your name initials, for example, or it can be some little stones like these that you can put instead of the regular uh, top of the cap. Then you have a band that says Homo sapiens there and nothing more 
and the barrel that has nothing engraved on it. Then you have this blind cap and this is it for the shape of the pen. About something that is very unique in this pen is the material. This pen is made of a combination of lava from Mount Etna in Italy and then it is mixed with uh, an island resin and it makes this somehow porous material. It is highly hygroscopic so it will absorb your uh, water and and your and the moisture so it is a very organic material and it is very uh, interesting it has some texture to it I don't know if you can see it like little small holes it's, it's very interesting the, the material and it feels really nice and kind of warm in your hands so it's very nice material and um, the finish of this pen is all the trim is made of bronze that's why this is the bronze age then something very interesting in this pen is the cap or uncapping system you do like this and you remove the cap you don't you almost don't twist the cap so let me show you you are here you do just this and the cap comes off because this is not a thread it is this kind of system that picks one of those little dots that are inside the cap I'm not sure if you can see them they catch on these things on the section and they fit in place so this is a nice and interesting thing now about the pen when you uncap it you have a section quite nice to hold the pen also this is not sharp so you can hold it here or even higher if you want it has a hour shaped section so it's quite nice to hold and this one has the 23k palladium nib this nib is not made anymore they now make it uh, from gold um, but it is an interesting and beautiful nib it is the number six and it has the that all that decoration from Visconti and then Firenze so very very beautiful uh, nib the nib unit and screws so you can clean it or service anything on the pen and it is really nice the only thing I think that when we look at this pen we may find the nib a little bit too small for the overall size of the pen and this is more even more apparent when you compare it with a Montblanc that has a big nib for this pen and that one is a little smaller but don't be fooled because the nib is really really nice and what I have to say more about this I have to say that uh, I mentioned it so slightly the this this nib is in palladium it's not made anymore this was not a limited edition it was a regular edition but they don't do the nib of palladium anymore I think the, the thing that I don't like that much here in this pen is the clip this is something that has been told to, uh, talked about many times which is the the, show, the nib is the clip is very springy so you can easily operate it but you can't slide anything underneath it because it's very difficult it's very flush to the to the surface of the cap you have to pull it with your fingers and then put it on some kind of fabric that is not that good recently this is the Visconti Breeze totally different pen and for a totally different uh, price range they have these and raised so it's much easier to operate than this one again I was talking about the material just let me show you this is another Italian pen this is the Netuno 1911 and you can see this ha this has a, a matte surface but it is much more shiny than that one so 
this is really a unique material. It's not only the finish, it's the material itself. This pen has the filling system, is a power, fi uh, the power fill, and the power filler is uh, like a vacuum filler. It, you unscrew this, you have a rod, then you press it, and it makes a vacuum and the pen fills. So it is uh, a vac fill, although Visconti calls it power fill. The price of this pen is 600 and 10 euros in Visconti website and so it is not an inexpensive pen. Again, to show you just the size comparisons with the usual pens that I use for this purpose, we have here the Lamy Safari from a, an older special edition, I don't remember the year, and I have here the Visconti, okay, they don't hold looking up, and a Parker Centennial Lufol. So you can see the Visconti is longer than all of those, and when we uncap the three pens, we see these. The Visconti is roughly of the same size of the other two. So it is a nice sized pen and it's not very heavy. I think it is very, very comfortable and the material is very nice to hold. And now let's see how the pen performs. But first, before I do that, I just want to show you that it uncaps very well and it posts quite securely, but it becomes very top heavy. So if you hold the pen like this, it will fall backwards because of the the weight of the cap. So forget about posting, at least for my in my opinion, and just use it uncapped without posting. Keep the cap in the hand with which you're not writing to be sure you don't lose it. That's uh, how I usually do it. I keep it in my left hand because I write with my right hand. If you do the opposite, just do the opposite. I hold it like this while I write so I don't lose my caps because I usually don't post almost any pen unless it is a short pocket pen or something like that. And now let's see the pen in action. And what we have here, you already know. This is the Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze H Oversize. This is a very large name. And you see because of the reflection of the light there, it is quite wet ink. It, it is a quite wet pen because it lays down so much ink on the paper that it doesn't dry immediately and then the camera can't focus it correctly because it just see it just sees a shiny surface oversize and this is a fine palladium nib the the paper that i'm using is the usual rodia dot pad and the ink inside the pen is one of my favorite because it's a safe ink and easy to clean is the parker Quink black and now let's see how the pen performs and I think as you imagined it performs quite well because such a white um, a wet pen is very hard to skip because it, the flow is just good and that is something you can see here it performs really well if you do something like this and then you go with your fingers over you will see that it is wet. And if you do here, that looked almost uh, dry, it is not. It puts really a good amount of ink on paper. So the flow is very nice. About the nib width, I would say this is a real fine nib. And you will see that the downstrokes are a little bit um, wider than the, the, the horizontal strokes because I just have to press it very hard, very lightly to have the same kind of line because this nib really is soft 
and it can deliver some amount of flex, although it's not really a flex nib, but you can have some line variation. And that is what I'm going to show you now, because if I do this, this is with no extra pressure in writing, and now with some more pressure. Okay, and don't think that I'm over pushing this uh, pen, because it can really do this. So, you will have a fine line that goes to, I would say, to a broad line, and if you want to, to write on the reverse side of the nib, you have an extra fine line. And, unlike many other nibs that I try in this way, that I don't really like, just if I need to put a very small note in some between some lines of text, it really performs, it is smooth and it doesn't dry out. So it's really good. About the smoothness of the pen. This is very smooth, although it has a, just a little bit of feedback. I wouldn't say it is even a feedback, but you can hear the nib on the fibers of the paper. Not a lot, you can't feel a lot, but you know that you're writing on paper. And I like this kind of feedback. So if I have to, to say it has more feedback than a Faber-Castell pen, for example, but much less than a Sailor uh, pen. And I also love the Sailor pen. So this is a very nice uh, pen in terms of weight for its size, in terms of the nib performance, in terms of ink capacity, because it takes a lot of ink inside, because it's a, the, the power filler or a vacuum filler. So this is a really, really nice pen. And I think this is all I had to show you. The pen is very comfortable to hold, but it is quite expensive also. Uh, but if you really want a good pen, this is a, uh, one of those. Just be aware, there are many stories online about the Visconti pens not being very reliable in terms of quality control, mainly about the nibs. Some nibs are a little bit uh, drier, they are not well adjusted. What I would recommend you to do is to buy one from one, or you buy it from a real store where you can try the pen before, or you may buy it from an online seller that may be able to offer the service of trying the pen before. So you can be sure that it is okay and it will meet your expectations. Just that. Overall, very nice pen. A little expensive, yes, but this is an icon on the fountain pen uh, universe, I would say. I would say these, the Lamy 2000, the, the Parker 51, there are some of the pens that are really iconic in history. There are a lot of others that I'm not uh, saying now, but it's hard to make that list. But definitely this will go into one of those lists and it's easier to see because you'll find it in many other YouTube channels. So this is all for today. I have to thank my friend for exchanging the other pen with this one. And thank you all for watching the video and I hope to see you soon. See you next time. Bye.